Welcome! In this video, I'll show you how to solve problem 2.5 as it appears in the fourth edition of Griffith's Introduction to Electrodynamics. This problem states the following. It says, find the electric field at distance z above the center of a circular loop of radius r that carries a uniform line charge lambda. All right, so the situation is what I drew right here. We have this well, <laughs> attempt of a circular loop of radius r, and from its center, we go up a certain distance z, that's going to be our variable, right? In the end, we'll get an electric field that depends on that distance z. And well, this is our point of interest. So what we want to do, uh, just as a quick overview, we want to take each little segment of line dl, and we want to find right what is the vector r that lets us find the contribution from the electric field, and then we actually calculate it, right? Keeping in mind that the formula for the electric field, in this case, since this is a charge distribution, we have to use the integral form. So it is lambda uh, r uh, vector. I like to use the unit vector notation, but if you like to use the regular vector notation and just divide by an additional uh, modulus, then that's fine. And dl. So this is the formula that we need to use. And as usual, we need to find every single thing that we don't know here, right? So we need to find this part. All right, so the first step, as usual, is to find what this vector r is, right? So what is vector r? And that will then allow us to find r hat, right? The unit vector. So vector r, how do we find it? Now, the easiest way is you start off in whatever point you choose, and then you need to find a way of getting to your destination, right? A vector is simply that. It is basically an indication. How do I go from, from point A to point B? So how do you go from point A to point B? You start here, and then we need to move towards the center, and then we need to move upwards a distance z. So how do we write that down? Well, you may be tempted to say, okay, since this uh, distance is the radius small r, now here we need to be careful, there's a lot of r's going around. So just a small r with no arrows, no anything, this is simply the radius. Um, in that case, well, we simply need to move our distance r in the minus x direction. If you took your axis to go z in this direction, x in this direction, and y somewhere over there, right? Um, but you have to be careful because if you take, for example, a dl somewhere over here, then you would have to go in this direction, which is going to be some mix, either in, just in y or a mixture of x and y. So you will see that actually the r vector depends on where exactly on this ring you are. It depends on the angle that you're making, right? On the polar angle, which is why in this problem, as you will soon see, it is much better to work with polar coordinates. So how would you do this? Precisely with polar coordinates. Because what we have to do is always move, since this loop is the same size, it's a circle, we need to move an amount r in the negative row. Now, I'm using row because we don't want to get confused. There's too many r's. By row, I mean the unit vector in polar coordinates, right? Row and theta, right? So we are using polar coordinates. And let's just make sure that we are very clear. Our center is going to be here, this point there is going to be zero. And then we have our radial distance. So this point here would be r at a distance r in the row hat direction. And in, in this particular case, since we define theta to be this angle with the what used to be the x axis, then this would be plus zero in theta direction. But of course, that's going to be changing, right? Theta will go all the way from 0 to 2 pi, or written more mathematically, theta is between 0 and 2 pi, right? 2 pi, of course, representing 360 degrees. So we can see that to go from, now let's get rid of some of these things, um, to go from our point dl all the way to our point p up there, we need to move minus r in the rho hat direction, and then we need to go up z in the z hat direction, which means, right, this is what we have when we have cylindrical coordinates, right? So polar is simply when we have rho and theta, and then cylindrical is when we have rho theta, but we also have a height, right? We, we call it cylindrical, of course, because this resembles a circle. So rho, theta, and z. 
So if we now want to find the unit vector, well, then simply what we need to do is take the r vector and divide by its modulus. Now, what is the modulus? The modulus is simply going to be the Pythagoras theorem of this, basically, right? Um, so let's see, r vector is minus r in the row direction plus z, z hat. And then we still have to now find the modulus, which, as we said, is going to be due to the Pythagoras theorem, r squared plus z squared. Okay, so now we plug all of this into our formula for the electric field. So let's see. The electric field is 1 over 4 pi epsilon 0, and we integrate. Now, what are going to be the limits of our integral? What is going to be our dl? Now, what defines, to find the dl, you need to ask yourself, what defines our curve? Our curve is basically the set of points where we are at a fixed uh, distance from the center r. So basically, our value for rho is r, and theta goes between 0 and 2 pi. So what happens here is that we need to integrate between 0 and 2 pi. Okay, um, so let's plug that in here. So we are integrating in theta between 0 and 2 pi. And then we have a lambda, the r hat vector, which is minus r rho hat plus z z hat, right, the unit vectors. We divide this by r squared plus z squared, and thus this is, of course, to the three halves. Now, we still need to find the dl, of course, and dl, well, we are integrating in this circle, so we are integrating in polar coordinates, so be very careful. It's not just d theta, it is r d theta, right? That is the, this differential of area, or basically of, of this line when you are in polar coordinates. Okay, so that's very important. Do not do not forget about it. Okay, I, I cannot emphasize it enough. I cannot emphasize it enough. It's very important. Now another important thing, once we want to do this integral, right, we can pull out quite a few things. So this doesn't depend on r, so we can take out lambda r, right, this and this. We can also take out, well, 4 pi epsilon 0. We can take out this, which makes it quite nice because, you know, it's not too fun to have to integrate something that looks like that. And then we have integral between 0 and 2 pi. Maybe let's separate them. And then we have minus r in rho height direction, d theta, plus the integral between 0 and 2 pi. Maybe let's use parentheses there. And then we have z, z hat, and d theta. Okay. So what do we have here? Now, be very careful because as we talked before, this rho hat vector depends on theta because the vector is constantly changing. It's the vector that points inwards. So it's not the same here than, he well, actually it's pointing outwards. We have a minus sign, which is why it's going inwards. But this vector is not the same as this one. It's not the same as this one. It's not the same as this one. So depending on which angle we have right there, 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 then our vector will look differently. Now, you need to go back and uh, think what, what exactly was the unit vector in polar coordinates. If you don't remember it, don't worry. Just think, well, how did we write x and y in polar coordinates, for example? In polar coordinate, x was simply our r vector. In this case, I guess we are calling it rho times cosine of theta and y was rho times the sine of theta. Thus, our position the, in the xy plane is simply going to be, right, our rho vector position in general is going to be r cosine theta in the x direction plus rho sine theta in the y direction. So if you want to find the unit vector, you need to divide by the magnitude of this vector. So again, by Pythagoras theorem, you have rho cosine theta x hat, so this hasn't changed, sine theta y hat direction. And now we divide by its modulus in a square root, so we get rho squared cosine squared theta plus rho squared sine squared theta. But here we can factor out rho, so we end up with cosine squared plus sine squared, but we know that that is 1, 
so we get the square root of row squared, which is simply a row, so the rows cancel out. Right, so we get that the unit vector is cosine theta in x direction, sine theta in y direction. So that is how you can find it if you ever forget about it. So the point is that now we need to plug that into our, actually, maybe I'm just going to write it again. So now we need to plug that into our integrals. So let's do precisely that. So our electric field, this is going to be lambda r for pi epsilon zero, one over r squared plus z squared to the three halves. And then we have several contributions. Now, of course, you could already know what this integral is going to be because from the symmetry of this problem, we know that the electric field has to go in the z direction because it's symmetric, right? Every single part of this circle contributes the same, so everything that comes from the sides should cancel each other out and will only have a contribution in the z direction. Um, but you, you could just say, all right, for that reason, this interval has to be zero, but still, I want to show you how to solve it in case you haven't thought about it. So this integral, we can factor out this minus r, is integral between zero and two pi of cosine theta d theta in the x direction plus the integral between zero and two pi of sine theta d theta in the y direction. And while both of these integrals are going to be zero, I'm going to show you why, this integral is sine theta between zero and two pi, but sine theta at two pi is zero, sine theta at zero is zero, so we get zero minus zero, so this entire part is simply zero. Then we have the integral of sine, which is minus cosine, right? This gives us minus cosine of theta between zero and two pi, which is going to be minus, we evaluate at two pi, which is one, minus evaluated at zero, which is also one, so it's also zero. Um, so that is how you get that it is zero in case you want to do it mathematically instead of just um, through like logic or something. Okay, so we only have this other integral, which is very easy because it's integral, right? Z, Z hat, we can take out. Integral between zero and two pi of just the theta. So this is simply two pi, right? Um, nothing crazy there. So here we can pull out the two pi and maybe write down things a little bit nicer. So this is one over four pi epsilon zero. And then we have one over r squared, or rather not r, uh, one, let's do it like this. So then we have two pi r lambda divided by r squared plus z squared to the three halves power and all of this in the z hat direction. Oh, I'm, I'm forgetting about uh, z. Okay, there we go. So this is the electric field, I forgot about that sign, for this particular case where we have this uh, circular loop. So if you want to you know, just go through the procedure, all we did as usual is find this r vector. Once you find this r vector, which is very easy to do, if you use this procedure of just walking back, right? And then you just have to integrate. You just have to do a few simple integrals. And as you can see, it was a relatively simple procedure. So yeah, I hope that this video was useful to you. If it was, please make sure to leave a like on the video, comment and subscribe, and maybe even consider checking out my Patreon. So I'll see you on the next video. Thank you very much for watching.